Good morning, it's Natalie Van Gogh, also known as Mother Goose. So I wanted to do a video today about, it's not on me, it's on the concept. So today when I got the kids ready to take them to school, um, one of my kids was having a harder time and he was just having a hard time going to camp. And the security at the guard, the security guard was really nice, very kind, and I was saying, is this my child's having a harder time we're going to take a minute moment before we go in and i checked in i said what's going on like instead of just pushing them in and then it was too he's my, my child said to me it was too loud there were too many people on the staircase they were all speaking very loudly and i said what does what did that do to you what did you think he's like i didn't like it i thought they were blaming me so I, um, so I said, I said to them, the fact that they were taking loud, talking loud, why did you think it was on you? Why did you think it had anything to do with you? And I said to him, to my child, I said, we have to understand that what happens in people and how people react and how people act doesn't really have anything to do with us usually. It's their emotional reaction of whatever happened to them throughout the day before that day that's coming out so I don't have to personalize it I don't have to take it in I don't have to make it upon me there has to be a separation between what happens to other people and how much I take it and I was telling him this concept I said I want you to grow up to be socially friendly compassionate and considerate and I said the compassionate part starts with you the considerate part starts with you. When you're able to do that with yourself, then you're able to do it with other people. And the socially friendly is when you're able to learn to deal with your feelings and better get along with other people. So when you're having frustration or upset, not everyone might be able to handle it. So you could hold it up and share it with me like you are now. And you need to know that I'm here to listen. Doesn't have doesn't mean that everybody will always be able to, but I'm always here as much as I can be. And the other part is you could journal it, you could do an artwork, and you could write about it. And I said to him, the opposite of that, opposite of social, socially, um, socially friendly becomes socially distanced. So if you don't learn how to become socially friendly and be able to be aware of your emotional feelings, you become socially distanced, emotionally detached, and selfish. So... The other extreme is that, that if you don't work on becoming socially friendly, emotionally connected and having that compassion and consideration, you become to the other part where that you become socially distanced from everyone else. You become emotionally detached and you become alone and self-centered. And that's not what we want. That's not what we want. So when we're raising our children, part of giving them the tools that they need to succeed it's not only academic. It's not only education. Let's remind ourselves. It's also to develop healthy, good social skills so they become socially friendly. It's to help them become emotionally connected to their own feelings and naming it and relating it to other people. It's part of a good emotional intelligence and creating good friendship and having compassion and consideration. That's what will lead them to have a successful, happy relationship and eventually in their marriage and with their children. Otherwise, when they don't know how to do that, when they're socially detached, emotionally disconnected, and just consumed with themselves, they will have a lot of challenges in their marital relationship. They will develop addiction. They will develop drinking, gambling, workaholicness, porn addiction, um, uh, retail therapy, shopping nonstop, eating, because they don't know how to feel their feelings. So this is our responsibility as parents with our little kids to do that for them. So when they grow up, it will develop with them in a healthy format. And the more our children are able to do that, the better it is. And the other day when I, when I took my kids swimming, one of them every minute kept saying, mommy, mommy, mommy. And in the past, I used to do that. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Then I realized if she thinks swimming is only fun, if I'm having fireworks go off, then she won't swim. So I said to her, Ima loves how you're swimming and how nice you're doing this. 
even if I'm not screaming and shouting, even if I'm not watching you every second, I want you to know how good you are. How do you feel about how you're swimming? How do you feel about how it's going for you? So that way, when I might not be there to give her that feedback all the time, she knows she's still doing amazing. So I said to her, I'm here, I'm watching and I'm noticing you. Even though it's not every second or every minute, I'm so proud of you. And I know she needs my attention more. So I try to give it to her more, but not in a way that it's excessive because then she's going to think the only time to be excited is that if she has, and she's seven. I mean, I did it a lot more for the attention when they were younger, two, three, four, but now I need to help her to transition to becoming more socially in tune, socially friendly, and getting along with other people. I cannot handicap her because that's going to make it harder for kids her age to be able to play along with her. So it's teaching her that even if I'm not always screaming your name, just like at camp and stuff, you should know that you have the key to your, your excitement also within yourself. I can't wait to hear all about it when we're able to have the time. But even if I'm not giving it to you unlimitedly, I'm still excited to hear about it after to help her not to be at the mercy of excessive validation from anyone to know that she holds that all within herself. Thank you for watching.